Hello, hello, NFA Money Mamas. It's time for another episode of the Woman Entrepreneur Podcast. And today we're doing a biz breakdown session. If you're new to the podcast, this is your place each and every week to get money mindset, manifestation, and business scaling tips. And biz breakdown sessions are really focused on Usually I do them with someone. Sometimes I do them solo, but they're always focused on you scaling your business and helping you get to whatever mark, you know, six, seven, eight figures, whatever it is for you faster. And so I'm going to help you break down things that are feeling like struggles. It could be money mindset pieces. It could be different tactical strategies to help you understand how to scale more quickly. So if this is something that interests you, go ahead and go to the woman entrepreneur podcast.com. So the woman entrepreneur podcast.com at the top of the page, you'll see a button that says, get your biz breakdown session. Just go there. And as you'll hear on today's episode, we just have a fun conversation. So this is about you highlighting your business, us having you shine because you're an awesome woman entrepreneur who has a business and just coming up with some tweaks to help you scale more quickly. And today we have on a really fun guest. And I was telling her pre-show that I haven't done a lot of local businesses or, uh, you know, like more brick and mortar who work in person. Um, When I started my business, I actually worked with entrepreneurs. I used to drive to their business and do coaching. And so I got to work with a lot of different types of businesses. This was back in the day when I lived in Boulder, Colorado, and it was so fun. And I started to feel like, oh, I'm not, I, you know, I can't drive around all the time and I didn't have an office. So I thought, what if I take it online? And somehow this information came to me to do that before COVID happened. So it ended up being pretty useful at the time. You know, these days there are so many cool ways to build businesses and I love seeing women rock it out. And Christina Lewis is one of those women. She helps you organize your space. Her business is called Blitz organization. And we found each other on Instagram. So we're going to have her on the show today for a biz breakdown session. Welcome to the show, Christina. Hi, happy to be here. Thank you. (laughs) Absolutely. I love your background already. It's like I can see that you're an organization master because your background (laughs) is so pretty. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And and for those of you, if you're watching on uh, YouTube, you'll be able to see this in the background. I'm going to pull up her website because one thing I just want to highlight is when I went to her website, it was like, holy moly, this is beautiful. <laughs> just right when you get to her page, it's like white and really beautiful font. And the spa- the picture she has on the space is a really beautiful. So she's done a really nice job with creating a, a, an aesthetically pleasing space, (laughs) which I'm sure translates into her business. So let's start with this, Christina. First, tell everyone where you're from. Okay. I am currently in El Dorado Hills, California. It's a suburb of Sacramento in California. Okay. Awesome. And so you serve that area. And I want to ask this, this is a question I like to start with just to get us oriented in the right direction. Um, If I could give you a magic wand and say, you, I can grant you any wish in your business at the end of 2023. So you would create this by the end of 2023. What would your business look like? My business would look like me not being part of every single project and helping as many people as I can. So serving the greater Sacramento area and having multiple projects going on at the same time and me being able to spend more time networking with people, um, helping other people in my community while still just managing the projects and not having to plan and execute every single one. Okay, awesome. So what you're really looking to do is expand your team, delegate to the right people. Is this, do you see a vision of your team being like really tight knit or do you see it more as like outsourcing uh, say a little more. I want to I hear more of the vision. Yeah, definitely tighten it. You know, like I envision having monthly meetings, um, maybe lead organizers in certain areas, um, like different uh, cities within Sacramento, um, and then having their person that they organize with in each of those locations. So I think okay. that's kind of my dream right now. Cool. I love that. Okay. And, and what kind of spaces would you ideally be organizing? We mostly do garages and pantries, I would say, are the number one um, 
spaces um, just because they're so easy to be dumping grounds. But we also do playrooms, bathrooms, closets, bedrooms, um, sheds, you know, so really any space within um, the home. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So it's all, it's going to be within homes and of the clients you've already had, who would you say is like your, your ideal client avatar? Um, I struggle a little bit with this. Um, it's really, oh, you know what, Christina, will you go back like five seconds? You, I, my, I think it was my internet timed out. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just repeat the question. Uh, who would you say is your ideal client avatar? Okay. Um, I struggle a little bit with this. Um, really it's any, um, busy family or professional that just doesn't have the time to declutter or make their space more functional for them. Um, I love working with single moms or busy families or families that are going through chemo um, or, you know, um, special needs kids. So you see where I'm kind of, I kind of, you know, I just love helping everybody. So um, I feel like my client avatar is just anyone that's um, too busy in their season of life to be able to make their space more functional. Okay. Okay. And have you, where would you say you're mainly drawing your clients from right now? Um, word of mouth. I've never done any advertising at all. Um, the, with the exception of the very first time that I posted on next door to give um, five families within my neighborhood uh, free services in, a, in um, exchange for portfolio pictures. That was the only time I really advertised that I was starting a business. Um, but it's all been word of mouth, and especially on Facebook, like the neighborhood groups. You know, somebody will say, I really need help with my garage. I need to get it organized. Is there anyone that can help me? And I have a whole, you know, community, my networking groups, my friends, um, and then all my clients that um, tag me in those posts. So that helps me get a lot more exposure too. Okay. Awesome. And would you say like it with the current capacity you're at, are you already maxed with the amount you can do by yourself? Do you have enough leads coming in and enough clients coming in to max out your time? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I, I'm part of every project and I'm, I'm pretty maxed out right now. Okay. And <laughs> I, I'm asking these questions just, you know, to, to help you the best would you say that you are charging what you're worth or do you think you're undercharging? Most of the time, um, I feel like I'm charging my worth. There are times when I um, estimate a project and um, I'm not making as much profit as I would like. So there are times when that happens. Um, okay. But for the most part, I feel like I'm charging my worth. Okay. Okay. If you had to guess like the percentage of time that you under, that, that you underestimate the amount of time it's going to take, is it like 10%, 20% of the time that that happens? Oh yeah, maybe 10%. Okay. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So you're, so you're pretty spot on in terms of estimating the right amount of time. So the next thing for you, it sounds like you're, you've got a good flow of people coming in and do you delegate to anyone yet? I just like within the last two weeks oh, um, good for you. started to delegate returns because a lot of times I want to have more on hand than I need just in case I need something. So I do a lot of returns. And so I finally, within the last two weeks, have asked somebody on my team to do that for me. And it's been amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. When you say delegate returns, it's like, like you're buying organizational tools for let's say a pantry, but you bought too much. So they're returning it for you. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I want to, I want to highlight while we're talking about this here, just like projects. I went through your website and I was like, Oh my God, this is amazing. Or maybe it was your Instagram. I was looking at it might've been, um, but okay. Oh yes. So if you go to, Christina's uh, website, it's blitzeddh.com. So blit, well, and actually that might be a mask. I'm gonna, here real quick, I'm gonna go back here. So it's blitzyourspace.com, blitz with a Z, blitzyourspace.com. You can also find her on Instagram at blitzyourspace. And she has really awesome before and after pictures. I was looking at these and I'm like, 
like <laughs> I always do this thing of like I'm singing to angels when I when I like you know step over them like uh, I go on this hike and I get to the top of the mountain it's like the beautiful sunset in the mountains and I'm like oh like this like singing <laughs> of angels and that's what I did when I saw her pictures I'm like oh, oh like so I feel awesome. that same way when I'm finishing a project sometimes too <laughs> yeah I mean wow it is like holy moly really good I, I'm my mom was like an organization master. And so I've learned pretty well, but I'm like, when I look at this, I'm just like, this changes your life, everyone. <laughs> like when you have an organized space, it changes your life. You know, you're talking your office, your garage, anywhere in your house. It's like, you just feel different. It's it, so, you know, people definitely check out her website and look at her before and afters. This garage is like, it, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be judgmental of the persons before, but it's like, it almost looks like it, you can't even walk in the garage. Let's just describe oh it God. that way. Okay, so that was my first garage ever that I organized. I that mean, was um, you... a free service that I gave. Oh, and, wow. Uh, <laughs> and the first time I stepped in a rat trap and it got my toe <laughs> because I couldn't see anything like where I was walking. So wow. uh, yeah, that was my very first project. <laughs> That's incredible. And it looks, I mean, it looks amazing afterwards, like incredible makeover. And these, the, the toy room, uh, pantry spaces. So some really, really great stuff you're doing here. So everyone definitely check that out. Um, okay. So let's go back to team building. Okay. So you have someone who for returns and your next level is having enough business to delegate and or taking the leap to delegate before you have enough business, it sounds like. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, so let's go here a little bit in, in the mindset way. What scares you about delegating right now to somebody who takes over a project? Okay. I am pretty controlling and I'm a perfectionist. Okay. So um, giving somebody that... Um, that control to make sure that it's like up to blitz blitz standards, you know, my standards. Yeah. I think that scares me a little bit. Um, and I think that's, that's really it. I mean, I really have an amazing team. I really do. And I just have not taken that leap and, but they're all pretty new too, but um, a couple of them are ready to take on their own projects. And um like a lot of people within the community I know too. So it'll be somebody who's an acquaintance and I feel like, Oh, I should be there because I kind of know them, you know? Yeah. And so, um, I don't give full control to somebody on my team um, because I feel like I need to be there. Okay. Okay. So this is no matter what kind of business you have, this is really common for, I pretty much, I'm trying to think of anyone I haven't heard this from just in terms of, you know, the, the challenge of delegating away, you know, we think of our businesses as our babies in a lot of ways, you know, it's like, it's your brand, it's your identity. It's, it, there's a lot that goes into building a business successfully and thinking that we need to do it all is often that, you know, kind of that scarcity block where we think that it won't be enough if someone else does it and that it needs to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it comes from that scarcity block of, you know, uh, not enoughness. And also thinking that you've got to work really hard to make money can also get stuck in there where you go like, I've got to do it all. No one can do it as good as I do. And it makes it hard to scale. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you have some of that going on, which is, uh, you know, a lot of people have this delegation scares people a lot for the reasons you're saying. It's like, will they do it as good as I can do it? What if it ruins my brand identity? What if people are upset with me because they expect me to be there and me to be the only one? So those are a lot of the things that come up. So let's play with this a little bit. Um, are you right now? How long does your average project take? Is it like a day project or is it longer? Uh, like a pantry would take a day, um, okay. a garage can take up to three days. Okay. And when you find a new client, do you, are you doing like a phone consult or are you going to their house to look at their space? How do you do that? Um, I usually either do a phone consultation, um, if they book me online, um, or, um, I do a consultation in person, especially for garages and pantries because they're, um, 
the spaces are so specific and I have to get certain supplies for those spaces. So I um, go and do a consultation in person and do measurements. Okay. Okay. And, and right now, um, since you're the only one doing that, what have you considered? I'm thinking, I'm like, my brain goes straight to brainstorming ways for, to loosen it up for you. So it's like thinking, you know, what if you include the person that you delegate to on it, bring them with you to the first initial consult. Uh, and actually once you secure the job, cause you don't need to be paying somebody when you're doing the consult because you don't know if you've gotten the job yet. Right. But it's like bringing them to that initial measuring and seeing, you know, Hey, getting them introduced so that they know that you're going to be handing the project over. Would that minimize your fears around them thinking you need to be there? Yes. Yeah, definitely. I never thought about that. Yeah. Right. It's, it's funny. It's, it's amazing when someone outside of your business can just see things differently. Oh, I love it. Yeah. No, that's a great idea. Um, yeah, I, I think that would be really great because then I think, okay, well, for like day one of the project, I feel like I have to be there because then I would make those introductions. But then if I'm already there, I feel like I should probably just stay there and make sure things are going okay. And, you know, then I get back into doing everything and, yeah. and yeah. finishing the project. So, yeah. So that- be a great idea. Yeah. So, so let's, uh, uh, that's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. And let's start the mindset reframe for you. So anytime you notice yourself going into hyper control mode, because this is like <laughs> a huge problem for people who have awesome businesses, right? <laughs> like it takes a lot of detail to create. I mean, a, the level of your website and the way that I can see you show up, that takes detail and it takes uh, aesthetically pleasing content. You know, that was like something I really noticed on your Instagram. So it's like doing that and going like, okay, how can I loosen that a little bit for someone else? One of my favorite mantras when I was doing my business, starting my business was screw perfection, just get started. You know, so it could be like, (laughs) right? Like for you, like anytime you notice yourself getting stuck in that mindset of like, but what if I need to make sure I'm there because it needs to be perfect. So any perfectionism stuckness or hyper control stuckness, screw perfection, it's okay to delegate. Like, to me, that would be a great one for you. Okay, yeah. I'll like, just, just say it out loud. Let's hear you say it. <laughs> Screw perfection. It's okay to delegate. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, right? And, like, just start shifting your brain around it a little bit because what you'll notice is probably the first time that you do it, especially if you already have someone that you think is ready to start taking on projects. And it sounds like you have a good team, like you've already attracted really cool people your way. Yeah. You don't have stuckness there. So then it's like now it's just letting go of the reins a little bit. And so it could be like a layer or a stage based approach. So let's say the first job, it's a garage and it takes three days. You take the person there on the first. You're not there for the second day. And on the third day, you go back at the very end to check everything and make sure it's awesome. OK. Right. So that frees up three days of your time and big it really like say two days of your time. Yeah. And then you can be working on a different project in the same way. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That's a and great then idea. that way it starts because here's the thing. This is what most people do in their mind is that they, they, they go black and white when they're scared. And so they're like, they can only see one way of doing things. And so they go like, it has to be this way. And my people are going to be freaked out. And it's not, what if it doesn't work out right? Instead of expanding your thinking. So I want you to start thinking every time you get into that mode, like, how could I delegate this? And so let's think of a few more. I want you to think of a few to help you expand your thinking in that way. Because to me, you really you don't have stuckness with attracting the right people to delegate to, which is some people's stuckness. Yours sounds like it's really good. It's more of that fear of that your clients aren't going to think it's good enough or that they expect you to be there. So start thinking about how can I shift the context in my client's mind to not expect me to be there? Mm hmm. So yeah. let's, let's think of a few more ideas. What, what are some more ideas you can think of? Of things to delegate? Well, ways to delegate that feel good to you so that you can start doing it. Okay. Um, so I also do proposals. Um, so that could be a way to delegate. They take me, and I do them all at night because... You know, I get up, get my daughter ready. I organize all day, come back. I want to play with her and spend time with her. Then it's bedtime. And then at night is when I do all my social media content. 
Um, and then I also do proposals at night. So um, I don't really get too much downtime. So it would be really nice to like another way to delegate would be to give those proposals to somebody to at least draft. Yeah. And then I could, I could finish it off with, you know, my own tweaks or maybe a supply that might be better suited for the project. So perfect. Uh, yeah. Great idea. Yes. <laughs> Right. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's something I was going to say before that I, I got a little sidetracked, but it's like stretching our thinking in incremental steps and in stages. So, like I said, like having someone there with you that first day and then going back the third day to check it will start to ease your mind. And what will happen is you'll notice like, oh, they did a pretty damn good job. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it, it also boosts you up in an expert way where it's like you get to go in and check and, and you just in front of your client, you're like, oh, whatever your assistant's name is, like they did an incredible job. And you just, you, you're boosting your people up. So when they refer to other people, they're talking about you as a team mm -hmm. versus just your name, which helps to expand your delegation possibilities in the future. Yeah. That makes right. Sense. So now what you're doing is building a brand instead of a, a, a job where you need to be there all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then I, I love the idea you came up with. So so having someone draft the proposal, like don't get scared that it, it needs to be perfect because you can always finalize everything, right? Yeah. So they yeah. could take the bulk of the work and do that part and then you just finalize it. Similarly with your posting on, on, your, on social media, you can do the same thing, right? Oh yeah, social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's another one. <laughs> Right. Because it can take a lot of time. Yeah. And he, here's what I want you to think about. And this is for everybody listening. Delegation should be making you money. And the reason is because what it does is help you be in your zone of genius. OK, so I'm. You, it sounds like you're good at a lot of things, which is awesome and also a drawback. <laughs> because what happens is you'll tend to want to do it all instead of doing the things that you're brilliant at and enjoying your business. And so, you know, one of the NFA money mantras is work less, make more, have fun. And so I want you to start working less through delegation, which means you make more money because you're in your zone of genius and you're paying people, you're outsourcing your time where they're doing things that you're paying less than it would take you to do at an hourly rate. And then you're having more fun because you're in your zone of genius. And then that night you get to spend time, you said it, daughter. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you get to spend time with your daughter, right? Which rejuvenates you for the next day. And you feel amazing when you wake up because you go like, oh, I'm living in my zone of genius. I'm enjoying building my business. I'm making more and more money. I can expand my team because I'm delegating away the stuff that is not in my zone of genius. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So start playing with those. I love that mantra for you. Screw perfection. It's okay to delegate. Right. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> and I so so something here's an action step for you that would be amazing is to write down a list and take usually what I have people do is a week long list. So it take a week like in a retrospect in your mind and write down every single thing you do in a week. And this is we're talking email in your personal life and in your business life. So email, social media, doing the actual jobs, uh, mowing the lawn, driving around, whatever it is, write every single thing down. And then write the things like next to the things that bring you like 10 level joy, put a star just so you know. And then the things that you just cannot stand, cross them off. And those are the first things you want to delegate. Mm -hmm. And then you want to just start playing with, okay, what are the things that are like, okay, that I, I don't totally mind doing. But let's say you like some parts of social media. You can even break these down into a shorter list. You could go, I like some, I, I like connecting with people on social media, but I don't really like posting it and putting the whole thing together. Then delegate that part, hmm. right? Yeah. So I want you to start developing a delegation mindset. Okay. Like how can I delegate all the things away that don't bring me joy? Okay. Can you think of like a few right now? I mean, we already said, so, so some of the projects work in and of itself the proposal. Yeah. Is there anything else? Yeah, social media, it takes me a long time. You know, I recently learned how to do reels. And then um, I just recently got on TikTok too. And so um, yeah, the reels, they just they take me a long time. And yeah. 
all my posts I feel like take so long too because I'm trying to tweet them and um, like the captions aren't too bad like I always feel like I just you know go with the flow with the captions but it's the which pictures to use and how to get this video just right and so those those take me I mean it probably takes me about an hour to do a, a video yeah okay a good chunk of my time okay so yeah. so here's a fun delegation practice in in social media like could you i mean you're in a in an area with lots of colleges around you so could you delegate to a social media student so it'd be like a, a marketing content marketing marketing act, it, it, someone who needs experience mm -hmm. it, to build their resume and literally you can find people to do this for free okay. right <laughs> yeah yeah, okay. because they need to build their resume, right? And they need experience from a business because that it could be a direction that they're going. So you could find somebody who's looking for that experience and delegate for free, or you could do a, a low paid internship, right? So, so that's the way I want you to start like expanding your, your mindset around it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's great. I <laughs> just say content. Yeah, like um, uh, you could look for a uh, often it'll be like in um, it, you could do look for copywriting. You could look for um, oh, what's the word? Um, it, definitely media. Like if you look in media departments, you'll see the titles of of what people are doing. Digital marketing, digital oh. marketing. That like you will find lots of people. I posted when I did mine originally. I posted on Indeed, i n d e e d dot com. Indeed.com. I got 30 applications that were stellar in a day. Nice. And so just, you know, start playing with that. And, and that will help you start to build your team out in a way that's, that's makes freeze up time for you. Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. I'll so it's, a, so it's like exploring possibilities, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So you don't have to get stuck doing it all. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Yes. Yes. And then you have more time with your baby. <laughs> How old is your daughter? Uh, she's five. Five? Oh, yeah. that is such a fun age. <laughs> it is. <laughs> nice. Okay. That's awesome. And then I love this because then you're showing your daughter empowered mama who has a business and isn't killing herself, working all the time, pulling her hair out, feeling overwhelmed. Yeah, that's true. And you have time for yourself, which is really important. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, it sounds to me, I mean, like just hearing from what you've said, it sounds like you have a successful business. So now that next scaling level is, is you're loosening the reins on delegation. Okay. And knowing it's possible. <laughs> like, and, and that people can do a good job, right? It might not be your 100% standard, but if it's 80% and you can go in and finalize to get it to a hundred, that could feel really good, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. One other thing I wanted to ask you is I think this is an important question too for everyone listening and for you. Um, is your social media bringing you business, would you say? Um, not too much. I do have people that, you know, I always ask, where did you find me? And a few people will say Instagram. Um, but yeah, most of it's all word of mouth. So just a very few. Okay. So one thing I want you to consider here too is how important is it to do the social media posting the way that you're doing it? Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, I'll just share a story from what's happened in my business and for everyone listening, you always want to be questioning what you're doing that you were told you should do mm -hmm. or that you've made up a story that you think is important to do. And you want to question it. Like, is this actually bringing me business or am I just creating busy work and making myself feel crazy? Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. especially when we have the money block that money is hard to make, we tend to overfill our plates and think we need to do everything. And it's important to question, like, is this actually bringing me business? Because if it's not, is there a point in doing it? Mm. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I feel like I need to post my projects, at least, so people have a spot where they can see yeah. what my style is. Um, but yeah, maybe it doesn't have to be, you know, taking an hour to figure out how to do a reel. <laughs> yeah. 
Exactly. So that's something that's important to consider. Like it could be, is it a slider reel that shows just before and afters? Uh, mm-hmm. If, it, or is it like a slider carousel post, you know, that kind of thing? Like how, and this is why I say this, like we always want to be building from the simplest place possible, you know, in order for us to create freedom through our businesses, we want to let go of shooting ourselves into thinking we need to do it at all. Because that's what we see some other people doing. Like to reverse engineer your business from your place of freedom looks like what do I enjoy doing and what's really bringing high ROI? Mm. And if it's not, how can I reconstruct it when drop, automate, delegate? Like I want you to live by drop, automate, delegate. What can I drop that's that's nonsense that doesn't even need to be done? What can I automate through a system? And what can I delegate to p- other people who can do it up to 70 or 80% as well as I can. Hmm. Right. Yeah. That's what's going to help you build a long term business that gives you freedom. Okay. And, and I, I, I get it because, like, <laughs> when I started my business, I did like all the platforms on social media. I didn't even think about like, where is the business coming from or how is it coming? You know, I just like thought, well, Brendan Burchard told me I needed to do it. So I'm doing it. You know, <laughs> like, I didn't even think about like what the real purpose of it was. And so as I've built more and more over the years, I've just narrowed, 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 narrowed. I'm like, what do I enjoy? What's actually bringing me business? What feels good? What can I delegate in a way that makes money? And I'm always thinking like, is this high ROI? Mm. Okay. So curious, what would you say is key takeaway for t- today for you? Um, definitely the mantra of, you know, try not to be perfect and it's okay to delegate. Yeah. For, you know, I, I need to get into that. It's been really difficult um, letting go. But I mean, even just doing the returns, like the simple things that anyone can do, you know, yeah. really, it's been a weight lifted off my shoulders. And that's what I want to do for my clients too. And yeah, the more I can do that with myself, the more I can help other people. Yes. I love that you said that because it's such a self-reflective mirror, right? It's like you, you delegating teaches and broadcasts to your clients that they need to get delegate too. Yeah. Like if you unblock yourself from delegation, it unblocks the people you attract your way from having objections about delegating organization. Yeah, exactly. So the more you loosen up, the more you'll attract people who are like, I'm ready to have you organize my life. My, you know, my, my house. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So that's, that'll be really fun for you. You know, I I think it's important to say here for everybody listening, you know, sometimes we overthink delegation. It can be simple stuff. Like what you just said, it was like a visceral reaction in your body of like, when I delegate away the returns, like, oh my God, that feels so good. And that's so simple. It could be for me, it's like delegating someone to clean my house. Like I used to do all the stuff and now I'm like, please come clean my house. I, it's not something on the weekend that I want to do. And the person that I have is amazing and she loves it. And it's awesome. Like I can support her business while she supports my business because I delegate that away. And so it might look like hiring a grocery shopper. It might look like for you, it could look like hiring a student who needs to build their their resume or their C, I call it CV in grad school, their resume in order to get the next job for them. But it frees up, even if it frees up two hours a week for you, that's two hours where you could go work out or get a massage or do whatever it is that you enjoy. Right? Yeah. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Yay! That's what we're creating for you. <laughs> so screw perfection. It's okay to delegate. I want everyone here. Let's say you're listening on the podcast. Take a screenshot and tag both me and Christina in it. Hers is Blitz Your Space. My Instagram handle is NFA Money. And, and use the hashtag screw perfection and then say just, you can either say just get started because a lot of people need this to get started. Or you could say, delegation makes me money. Screw perfection. Delegation makes me money. Screw perfection. It's okay to delegate. Whatever feels aligned for you, take a screenshot, share it with us and put that hashtag. And of course, if you're watching on YouTube, you can leave a comment. Um, Okay. So tell us, Christina, 
um, re just remind everyone who's listening again, I always like to kind of close with summary. Tell us where people can find you and the area where you work to blitz people's spaces. Okay. I work in the greater Sacramento area. I'm located in El Dorado Hills, California. And my website is Blitz Your Space. My Instagram is um, Blitz Your Space. My TikTok is also Blitz Your Space. And then Facebook is Blitz Organization. Awesome. So, so all of those are in show notes and definitely connect with her. We found each other on Instagram. That's my favorite place to hang out on social media. So all of you there hang out with me at NFA money. Uh, that's where I post all my women entrepreneur podcast stuff and hang out with Christine in there. And if you are in that area, hire her today because <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, if you go to her website or her Instagram, you will see so much awesomeness there and you will definitely want her to come and make over your space because wow, I, I love having an organized life. Like oh, so good. Feels so good. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. And so action step wise between now and when I check on you in a week, what, what action will you take from our session today? I'm going to take somebody with me to um, the first day and be able to introduce them to the client and really hear firsthand what the client's needs and wants are so that they can do a better job doing the project. Perfect. I love it. I can't wait to hear how it goes. That's awesome. Good for you. Thank you for coming on. It's been awesome to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, everyone. Thank you all for being here. I do what I do because of you. And in closing, don't forget to give us a shout out on Instagram or YouTube. Hang out with us more. And if you're interested in coming on for a biz breakdown session yourself, go to the woman entrepreneur podcast.com and click on get your biz breakdown and you can hang out with me on here and we'll have the, a similar conversation to the one we had today. Until next time, I'm sending hugs and NFA money making high fives. Hey friends, just a quick reminder that I'm looking for women entrepreneurs who want to do a biz breakdown session with me on this show, just like the one that you heard on today's episode. Think of this as a zone of manifestation audit to help you scale your business and make money more easily. During our recorded session, you'll get free money coaching from me with clear action steps that will help you scale your business more easily. And of course, as a guest on the show, you'll be able to promote your business and get some extra exposure. I'm doing this on a first come, first served basis. So head on over to www.bewomanentrepreneurpodcast.com and sign up for your biz breakdown session today.